Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And today I wanna to look at the Sandmark variable ND filter for iPhone and see if it's worth the price, not just in cost, but also usability. Let's take a look. So let's start with the basics. What is a neutral density filter? The overused analogy is it's like sunglasses for your camera, but obviously it's a little more useful than just protecting your lens from the sun. ND filters allow you to modulate the amount of light that hits the sensor without you having to adjust your aperture or shutter speed. But what does this mean practically? Well, for cameras like my Sony a7S III, if my scene is too bright, I could obviously just close down the aperture on the lens, which will reduce the amount of light getting through. But the trade-off is it will also deepen my depth of field. Sometimes this might be the look I'm going for, and for other times, I may wanna keep my focus soft. So let's say I wanna keep my aperture the same. The next option would be to adjust my shutter speed. On an old style film camera, the shutter was actually a physical element inside the camera, which modulated the amount of light hitting the film stock. But even though the shutter speed is all controlled digitally these days, it still has the effect of increasing or reducing motion blur within the image. In the film world, the general rule is your shutter speed should be set to double the frame rate. So right now, because I'm shooting at 25 frames per second, my shutter is 1 50th of a second. But here's where we have a problem, especially on a smartphone. Most smartphones don't have any way to control the aperture. The iPhone 13 Pro, for example, has a main wide lens with an f1.5 aperture. But you can't close that down, it's just f1.5 always. Even with this massive camera bump, they still can't fit in mechanical aperture blades like on a big lens. So when you're out shooting, especially in bright conditions, you only have your shutter speed to rely on. And as I mentioned, if you wanna follow the rules of filmmaking, you wanna keep your shutter at double your frame rate. Why? Because if you're shooting at 1 of a second and not 1 50th, your motion blur is gonna to look totally different. Movement has this really sharp and jarring look to it, and it's not a natural and smooth blur. That's why if you wanna use your iPhone as a professional filmmaking tool, Having a variable ND filter is a must have accessory in my opinion. It allows you to lock in your shutter speed and then simply adjust the filter to the desired exposure. This in turn allows you to adjust the amount of light getting in without having to make your shot look like the next Bourne film. I will say as smartphone content has become more ubiquitous, people are getting more used to seeing this fast shutter speed content. But for me, this is only more of a reason to use the correct shutter speed because it will set your content apart from the others that don't. So how do these Sandmark ND filters stack up? Well, first off, I love the design. They feel really premium from the build quality to the markings around the outside and the hard stops on either end. This is really important and actually something I don't have on my other variable ND filter I use for my other professional cameras because an ND filter is basically two polarizers working opposite each other. And sometimes around its travels, they can start to interfere with one another, creating an X pattern over the image and ruining the shot. This has happened to me before several times where the sun was so bright, I couldn't properly monitor the image. So having hard stops mean you'll never run into this problem. The other thing is I love the mounting system, which means I don't have to use a bulky case on my phone to use this filter. It's simply a clip which travels with me in this handy little carrying case, which I much prefer. If you're someone who's always using your filters and making content all the time, maybe you'd prefer a case. But for me, who mostly uses my iPhone without one these days, it's great to have this option. And if you do want a case, Sandmark sell these too with a step up ring so you can still use the same filters. Now, the important thing for me when it comes to NDs is the color cast. Every ND filter will result in some kind of color shift when added onto your lens. So it's really important, first of all, to make sure you know what the color shift is and make sure it isn't so horrendous that it's impossible to correct later in editing. I ran some tests on the Sandmark ND and thankfully I'm happy to report the color cast is fairly under control. The filter leaned more towards the warmer side, which is expected, but this was easily fixed using the temperature and tint controls in DaVinci Resolve. But this filter system isn't perfect. And here are some things I found in my short time testing it. The first is this clip isn't a great fit on the iPhone 13 Pro. Sandmark listed as compatible, to which I agree with them partially. It's a piece of glass that goes over the lens and does the same thing as on any other iPhone beforehand. But as the camera bump gets bigger, it's struggling to cover over all three lenses at once. And if you happen to misalign it, you could see massive vignetting or color shifts. 
While testing it, I constantly had to realign the clip depending on the lens I was using, always putting my finger in front of the lens to see which one it was first, and then trying to realign the clip so it would sit perfectly centered. If you have an older iPhone, this is where you'll fare much better, and you should be able to align it once for all three cameras. The second is audio, which is something I really didn't think about until I went to use the filter. Because it covers over the back microphone, it actually muffles the audio. This is an audio test from about one and a half meters away. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing. It's an audio test from one and a half meters away. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing. Kind of like the early GoPro when it's waterproof case. Okay, maybe not that bad, but this does mean if you're capturing content with audio, you'll wanna use an external microphone to ensure this isn't an issue. On an app like Filmic Pro, you can also adjust the microphone being used to negate this as well. But depending where your sound source is, this can still affect your end results. And finally, this isn't a con, but you'll really need to use a professional video app like Filmic Pro to get the best results. Because the default camera app really doesn't show you any information. So if you wanna make sure you're locked in at the correct shutter speed, which is kind of the point, you'll need an app that actually shows you what the shutter speed and ISO is. So what are my final thoughts on this accessory? Well, I think in terms of ND filters, I'm really happy with this one. From the build quality, the hard stops, and the generally great performance, I could recommend it on that alone. However, in terms of practicality, this is where I've probably lost most of you about 10 minutes ago. Because it's a separate clip, you may need to constantly realign on the iPhone 13 Pro, and it also affects your audio. So once you purchase a separate app like Filmic Pro, rig up a separate microphone, align the ND, your iPhone's starting to look a bit less run and gun. But as I said, depending on the content you're creating, this may be worth the trade-off. If you're someone who values having control over your final image and cares about how the motion blur actually looks, then as I said, a variable ND is a must have and this Sandmark filter is great. But if you're creating content and you value speed at the expense of getting the best image, then simply open the camera app and hit record. That's all you need. Again, I will reiterate, taking the time to do things properly will always be a good way to stand out. But in this brave new world where everyone is a creator, nothing beats having good content. The rest is just icing on the cake. I hope you all enjoyed the review. If you're keen to purchase one of these filters, you can find the link in the description below. It's the same price for you, but goes to help out the channel, which in turn helps me keep making more content like this. Make sure to subscribe for more, and I'll see you all in the next one. But this was easily fixed using the temperature and tint controls in DaVinci Resolve. <laughs> My eyes are tearing up. Oh no. I'm gonna look like I'm crying. <laughs> just get I just get emotional when I'm talking about DaVinci Resolve. <laughs>